Now tell them, say, we are Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down.
praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him with radiance and their face were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamped all around those who feared him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word.
Come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him on this Sunday morning. We thank God, amen, for you joining us in person and you by stream on this morning. From Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 5895 Benz Ingleman Road, right here in San Antonio, Texas, where our under-shepherd is none other than the Bishop S.E. Iglehart. Let's give God praise. Let's give thanks for our pastor on today. Again, thank you for joining us from all around the world on this morning. There is a word from the Lord just for you on today. Taylor made. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come humble before you once again. We thank you, God, for who you are right now. We thank you, God, even now for each and every one. Hallelujah, that's taken time out. Hallelujah, to seek you even the more. We pray, Lord, for that one in their home, in the name of Jesus, on the side of their bed, that one that's in their hospital room. That one, God, that's traveling in the airport even now. We thank you, God, for just moving and turning things around as only you can do. We give you praise. Now, open our understanding on today. And, Lord, we thank you that, that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and praise him where you are and where you are joining us on today. Amen. To the, to the word of the Lord, amen, from Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 17 through 21, and it reads as such. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, thanking God for you that have joined us by stream on this morning. And I want to deal with today, the anointing makes the difference. Can you say that with me? The anointing makes the difference. Can you say that to that person next to you to encourage them? The anointing makes the difference. And we need to understand, and that is so true. Amen. When we look at the word of God on today, amen, we find out when we talk about the anointing, amen, it is the pouring or rubbing of oil uh, or ointment on the hair or the beard or other part of the body uh, to anoint. It was a common practice in, God, in the Bible throughout God's word. A guest in a home, as we found out the woman, pray God, that anointed Jesus, amen, washed his feet with her hair and anointed him. We find out that it was a common practice in Bible times. Uh, a guest at a home was anointed partly as a token of honor and esteem and partly to moisten the, moisten the skin uh, after the visitor had been exposed to heat or dry conditions. And we find out during the anointing, the person was customarily, they knelt down. Uh, and, and while they were knelt, knelt down, we find that the oil was poured over one's head. The substance was used, a man that was used was olive oil, myrrh, or sweet cinnamon. Amen, cinnamon. Anointing, as we find out, amen, was the distinct religious rite among Jewish people. 
When we think about the anointing in the natural, first natural, then spiritual, we see that a person was sometimes anointed to set himself apart for a particular work or calling or service. Many times in Scripture, we find from a ceremonial uh, standpoint that it was a, a thing that was used to set one apart, amen, to consecrate one, to have one set apart, anointed for God's purpose, amen, a specific purpose or calling that God had set forth. We find that Aaron and the priests, amen, in Moses' days, amen, they were anointed, amen, ordained, amen, by anointing over in Exodus, the 28th chapter and over in Exodus 30 the altar and the tabernacle were anointed amen as they would move from one place to another traveling throughout the wilderness amen the altar and the tabernacle were anointed over in Exodus Saul as we find out the first king of God's chosen people amen he was anointed amen over all of Israel amen we find out that when they demanded a king amen when Samuel told them, pray God, and went back to talk to God, amen, and God let them let Samuel know, amen, that they were not rejecting him, but they were rejecting God, amen, and give them what they wanted, amen, they demanded a king like everyone else, and God had them to, to anoint Saul, amen, as their first king, told him what kind of king that he would be, and all these kind of things, but the people yet demanded a king, Saul was anointed king, we find out thereafter, amen, that David was anointed, amen, not only once, twice, but three times, amen, that David was anointed as a young lad, amen, that was brought to Jesse's home, amen, when Samuel showed up, when God said, I have provided me a king, amen, for he, to lead his people, and when Samuel went down to Jesse's house, we find out that David was anointed, amen, then, amen, he was anointed to prepare him, amen, for the kingdom if you will. Amen. He was anointed to prepare him to endure what he would go through. Amen. Some 15 years or so prior to coming in. Number two, David was anointed. Then we find out as king over Judah. Amen. As he set up camp in Hebron the second time he was anointed. Amen. The third time we find out that David was anointed king over all of Israel and Judah. Amen. And took up camp there in Jerusalem. Amen anointed three times. The anointing, amen, is connected to God's purpose throughout Scripture. These kings were called, called anointed ones. They were anointed by prophets acting on God's behalf. They ruled as God's representatives to the people and were to rely on God's wisdom as leaders and rulers. Amen. We see here that Jesus, is where, Jesus amen, was God's anointed one, the Messiah, the anointed one of God. This Jesus of Nazareth, amen, that, that Luke talks about in Acts 10 and 38, amen, where he mentions that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. A lot of people were named Jesus, but the one of Nazareth, amen, with the Holy Ghost and with power, amen, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Pray God, he moved out, amen, as a result of the anointing upon his life. Amen. He didn't just sit there. He wasn't sitting in neutral. He wasn't sitting in part. But he used the anointing, amen, from the Father, amen, to do good and to heal all those that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. As we would see there, how God, as Jesus stated there on his first, during his first message there at his hometown of Nazareth. Amen. As the word would read over in, in Luke, in our, today's text, it says here in Luke uh, Luke. 4 and 7, 4 and 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee after he's been baptized. Amen. And there went a fame of him throughout all the region. And he began to teach in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And there was delivered unto him a book, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, if you will. And there were six things that he described, amen, in this first sermon, being back home in Nazareth of Galilee, he said he was anointed, he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he had, number one, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Come on here, somebody. God
God has purpose, amen, for his anointing. Amen. To preach the gospel to the poor, the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Number two, to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Sin breaks hearts, pray God. Not only God's heart, but sin will break our heart. There are things that will come into our lives that can literally break our heart. Amen. The loss of a loved one. Amen. Things that when we made bad decisions, amen, can break one's heart. But ultimately, S-I-N can break our heart, pray God. But he said, I came, amen, I was anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. To preach deliverance to captives, if you will. Amen. To a re recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. When life throws us curves. Amen. There are people that have had entire nervous breakdowns. Amen. When life has come, amen, like drinking from a, 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 drinking from a fire hydrant. When life can throw so many things at some individual, people have been known to have nervous breakdown. But how many know God knows how to restore today? How many know that God knows how to restore the mind, hallelujah, of one that has been broken through life? Jesus said he was anointed, amen, to, amen, to set at liberty them that were bruised, amen, that had been caged or imprisoned, amen, by the things of life, if you will. Fear can grip one to an extent that the, that one can be living in a prison as a result of fear, the spirit of fear in one's life. But how many know, thank God for the anointing of Almighty God. Hallelujah, that the anointing that I'm speaking of, it will destroy every yoke. Come on here, somebody. It will, it will move burdens. It will destroy yokes in one's life. Amen. He spoke of that he came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He didn't go as far as what Isaiah has stated in Isaiah 61 and 1 because Jesus spoke of the things that he would be doing during the first advent. Amen. Not his coming back, but when he came on this earth, if you will, the things that he would be doing, the things that, amen, the Messiah would be doing. And when you would take, amen, and see his life and see him in operation and check it by the scriptures, all the prophets agreed, amen, that this is the Christ. Amen. This is the anointed one of God. All the prophets agreed. Even, amen, Isaiah we spoke of today that looked down the telescope of time some 700 years before Jesus would come in the flesh. Amen. And would write this and prophesy forth tell, amen, what Jesus spoke in Nazareth, that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to do these things, if you will. The anointing of God, amen, is connected, amen, to the purpose of God. The anointing of God is connected to obedience. Somebody say obedience. Amen. Doing the will of God. The anointing of God, amen, will never go contrary to the word of God. Come on here, somebody. It will always line up, amen, with the logos, with God's word, if you will. Amen. We see here, I said today, the anointing makes the difference. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here today? Pray God that the anointing of almighty God working on the inside. I'm talking about his wisdom. I'm talking about his power, his strength, his ability. Amen. All of these things working in and through and flowing through us. Amen. As believers, as born again believers. Is anybody here would say, pray God, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, pray God, when men rose up against us, have you ever had trouble on your job? Have you ever had trouble in your home? Pray God, when you're going one way and your children are going another way, when you said, Lord, Lord, I just need your strength. I need your anointing. I need your strength just to make another day. Pray God, when it seemed like I've got co-workers, pray God, they've been assigned out of the pit of hell. When it seemed like I've got a supervisor, pray God, they've been sent to me out of the pit of hell. Has anybody ever been in a situation when you say, Lord, I need your strength. I need your power. Pray God to be able to stand. Has it ever been a case, pray God. Have you ever been ostracized? Have you ever been cut off to the side? When you come up to the water cooler, pray God, everybody going another direction. But God will give you strength. Uh, he'll give you power uh, to stand in the 
midst of whatever you're going through. Somebody ought to give him praise right down to that. Jesus said it. He said it so plain. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, you shall receive dunamis power, dynamite power, explosive power, Holy Ghost power working on the inside that will show up in your home, will show up on your job, will show up in the airport, will show up when they don't know you from Adam, but they know there's a difference in your life. I said to somebody today, it's the anointing that makes the difference. Can you tell somebody that it's the anointing that makes the difference when I can't do it of myself? Pray God to realize that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you say, Lord, I can't do it of myself. Lord, I'm outnumbered, highly in things that are against you. But how many know uh, if God be for us? Uh, I said, who uh, can be against us? Uh, God will uh, give an anointing uh, in and upon your life uh, if I'm willing uh, to do the will of the Lord. Uh, I said, God uh, can't use you. Uh, somebody says, sitting down. Uh, but when I'm willing uh, to rise up, uh, he'll give me courage. Uh, he'll give me boldness. Uh, he'll give me power up uh, to stand. Uh, come on and give him praise uh, right down through there. It's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> how that the Holy Ghost, Holly, what it meant throughout Jesus' life. Amen. From the cradle to the grave. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Ghost and power in his life. Even at his birth. Hallelujah said that thing that's inside of Mary, Mary is, the, is a holy thing. Amen. has been placed there by the Holy Ghost throughout his life. Even at his baptism. Pray God. There he is. Amen. And the Spirit of God comes down in the form of a dove and lights upon him at baptism. Pray God and said, and God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Pray God, how many know that God will not leave us with an identity crisis? I said, sometimes people are struggling with their identity. People are struggling about who God created them to be. But the God I serve, uh, he'll never leave us uh, with an identity crisis. Uh, he said, this is uh, my beloved son uh, in whom uh, I'm well pleased. Uh, and the anointing of God uh, came down, uh, lit upon him uh, at his birth, uh, now at his baptism, and now he moves out uh, when he's ready uh, to be tempted of the devil. Uh, it's the spirit of God. God, uh, that leads him uh, into the wilderness uh, to be tempted uh, of the devil. Uh, how many know the anointing uh, makes the difference? Uh, he didn't go out there because of something he had done, but God uh, led him uh, into the wilderness uh, by his spirit. Uh, that when the enemy uh, came in, uh, said, why don't you, uh, if you are the son of God, why don't you turn Turn these stones into bread. After 40 days and 40 nights, he's a hungry. And the enemy, he doesn't play fair, but he said, turn these stones into bread. If you are the son of God, wanted Jesus to abuse his power, to abuse his authority. But he hit him with, it is written, said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Give him praise right down through there. Hallelujah. Yes, when he came at him with the lust of the flesh, with the lust of the eye, with the pride of life, bring out 
turn these stones into bread. When he came and would tell him, why don't you just go up on this high pinnacle, cast yourself down, knowing that the angels of the Lord, they'll, they'll, they'll embrace you. He took scripture out of context. How many know the devil is a liar and he's a deceiver too? He quoted out of Psalm 91, but he twisted the word. But Jesus let him know thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Only him shall thou serve. I say the anointing is connected to obedience. The anointing is connected to God's purpose to glorify him. Give him praise right down through there. And when the enemy told him, why don't you just go on and just worship me? Fall down and worship me, pray God. Jesus put him in check. The living word put him in check with the written word. I mean, listen, God walked him through not only his baptism, amen, with the anointing. He not only walked him through his baptism, but when he came back after, amen, going through that trial, going through that temptation. Listen, Jesus was really tempted. Come on here, somebody. Amen. He was tempted at all points yet without sin. Come on here. But God, it qualified him to be our great hope. When he returns, amen, in the power of Almighty God to his hometown there in Nazareth, although he's born, amen, in Bethlehem, Judah, had gone down into Egypt, made an excursion into Egypt and came in and grew up, amen, at Nazareth of Galilee, amen, really he was from Bethlehem, Judah. but when he came to the synagogue among his own people and open that book and begin to read where Isaiah had spoken him. Amen. He said, this day is the scriptures fulfilled in your ears. In other words, he's thinking to start putting this into practice. Everything you see in the written word, he's fixing to be putting it into practice. It's the anointing. Come on here, somebody. Pray God. I said, from the cradle to the grave throughout his ministry. Does anybody recall that amen, it was the anointing that showed up in the bar of tomb where they laid his body. Pray God, as Romans 8 and 11 says, amen, the same spirit, amen, that raised Jesus from the dead, if he dwells in you, he shall also quicken or make alive your mortal body. He'll help us to move from mortality to immortality, amen, from corruptible to incorruption. We'll be changed in a moment in a twinkling of eye. Somebody say the anointing makes the difference in my life. Life. Not trying to do it in my own strength. Come on here, somebody. Maybe not trying to do it in my own strength. But Lord, I'm dependent on you. I'm asking somebody, whose side are you leaning on? Somebody say, I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side are you really on, pray God? I'm on the Lord's side. And it makes me a mighty God. Give him praise right down through there. The anointing makes the difference. God didn't leave it with, he didn't leave it with Jesus. Amen. He conferred it unto us. Amen. He conferred it upon us, if you will. Amen. When he prayed to the Father, amen, that I'm praying, I prayed to the Father that he send you another comforter. Amen. Paraclete. Amen. Para of the same. Amen. Comforter, whatever you need him to be. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Amen. He's, he's an intercessor. He can be an intercessor. He He's a counselor. Amen. He's a guide. He's the spirit of truth, pray God. He's standby power when you need it. When's the last time you knew it was God, pray God? You knew it wasn't you. Amen. When the deck was stacked against you, you knew it was God that brought you through. Come on here, somebody. You said, Lord, it was you. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, what? Delivered them out of them all. It was you, Lord. It's the anointing that makes the difference to destroy yokes in our life, amen, to move burdens, amen, that have us weighed down and burdened down. God knows how to flip the script. Amen. It's through the anointing that God ushers in peace in our lives. Come on here. Pray God, where there's been confusion, where there's been trouble, a troubled heart, he knows how to fix a troubled heart. Come on. That mother, that single mother that's heading up that household, it's the anointing that makes the difference in your life. When I come to Christ, God knows how to 
to equip me. Come on, somebody. He knows how to equip me to make it through whatever it is. And I want to tell somebody today, there's not anything that God has not spoken to you that he will not help you to accomplish it. Come on, somebody. That he will not help you to fulfill what he's called you to do. Tell somebody it's the anointing that makes the difference. Connect it to God. Throughout scripture, you can check it time and time and time again. How God would come in, amen, regardless of what they were faced with. So I want to tell somebody today, amen, maybe you've lost a loved one, amen, your heart is heavy, but I want to let you know God has a way of ushering in comfort, amen, to a broken heart. Come on and praise him right down through there and tell somebody it is the anointing. I thank God, pray God, hallelujah, how, what he did in my life one day. Come on, as I close on today, I want to let you know, pray God, amen, when it seemed like how am I going to get started? Uh, when I was called uh, to the ministry and, and was working a secular job and then later on called to the pastorate and working a secular job, amen, with great demands upon one, but how many know, pray God, when we depend on the Lord, amen, it's some time we're going to have to go down on our knees and pray. It's time we're going to have to go down and seek God, but I want to let you know if you seek him, he shall be found of you, pray God. Amen. When the demand of the schedule was heavy, like it is in some of your lives right now, and you that are viewing by, by stream on today, I want to let you know when I went before God, pray God, and I want to let you know, amen, that not only did he fill me with the Holy Ghost, but he anointed me, get, he equipped me to do his will. Come on here, somebody. And he knows how, uh, hallelujah, to make it easy. He knows how, uh, hallelujah, to make the crooked path straight. He knows how, amen, to exalt every valley. He knows how to bring every mountain low. He knows how, hallelujah, to make the rough places plain. In Isaiah 40 and 4, but I thank God, uh, hallelujah, that when he did it, uh, somebody said when he did it and when he's doing it, uh, because we have not arrived, pray God, but it is the anointing uh, that makes the difference. Uh, when things get tough, uh, when things get rough, uh, if we just go down on our knees uh, and say, Lord, uh, I need you the more. I can't make it of my own. How many know that he'll bring you through? Somebody say every time. Somebody say he'll do it every time. And to God be the glory. Stand to your feet today. Stand to your feet. It is the anointing that makes the difference. You, you fear not, Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Don't be terrified. Don't be intimidated. He said, I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be intimidated. Trust God. Don't have to be intimidated by a workload. Don't have to be intimidated by a demand that's been placed upon you. And it gets a little bit tough and get a little bit heavy along the way. Jesus simply says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your souls. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here today? That he'll give you rest. I said he'll give you rest throughout it all when we come to him. And it's something about it that many things that get us so spread so thin. I said the anointing is connected to obedience. The anointing is connected to the purpose of God. And sometimes when we do not acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways, the small things, the big things, sometimes you would just say we're self-starters. But he's told us to trust in him with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding, all our ways to acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. And I found out, praise God, and I'm finding out, amen, day by day, if I'll acknowledge him and be directed by him and my steps ordered by him, I'm not, pray God, I'm not burning out.
because I'm depending on him, because I'm where he would have me to be, when he would have us to be, that's where the anointing is. Come on here, somebody. When we will be where God would have us to be, when he would have us to be, that's where the anointing is. Hallelujah. When I, before I came to San Antonio, Texas, I prayed and I asked the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? And how many know he'll order your steps? How many know he'll establish your going? And when you get a word from the Lord, I, hallelujah, don't, then step out by faith and trust him every step along the way. His wisdom, his strength, his power, his ability, his anointing flowing in, through, and upon our lives. Keep stretching out. Keep believing him. Keep moving in the things of God. Amen. Cast off that discouragement and expect God to give you courage to not lose heart and keep stepping out and watch God's ability show up in your life. And when he does it, somebody say, when he does it, give him the glory. Come on and give him praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word on today that it is the anointing that makes the difference. Not only that made the difference in Jesus' life, but in our lives right now. How you anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Lord, I thank you for your anointing in and upon our lives, even now in this very hour, to carry out the things that you have. Amen. For each and every one of our lives, an anointing to love our enemies, an anointing to do good to them that hate us, an anointing to bless them that curse us, an anointing to pray for them that despitefully use us and persecute that we might be able to stand and give you the glory and give you the honor in Jesus' name. Come on and praise him right where you are. God bless you. This is Bishop Shelton C. Rhodes, amen, and the Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 5895 Ben's Ingleman Road right here in San Antonio, Texas, where the under shepherd is none other than the Bishop Shel the Bishop S. E. Aglehart. Give God praise right where you are.
come to do this morning. Tell them, say, we are Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down. 